um, 15 years or something, and uh, it, it's, a capital, it's a piece of capital investment. Um, and of course, the, the, that grant is simply covering the cost between a diesel bus and the electric equivalent um, and, the, the, uh, and the revenue collected on the bus service will really offsets its, its cost of provision. I could provide an Excel spreadsheet if you would like that. <laughs> as, as I said before, this is, if, if you look at the infrastructure delivery plan, all these costs have been set out and the viability has been assessed. Uh, I hesitate to say it, and I haven't tried to stop Ms Worthington, but this is not one of the T1 to T9 issues. This is an entirely different issue which really arose in the context of the delivery plan, but you, you've got the answers to it now. But it doesn't actually go to the drafting of the policies. Um, sir, T1 specifically um, mentions the provision of um, the 10-year service um, that is going to be provided for within the strategic sites. Uh, well, if, if, if you are unable to, if, if the policy says you're going to do a 10 year, but you haven't got any justification that it does do a 10 year, um, I believe that's a, a lacking in, um, Justification? Well, no, because you haven't read the policy, Ms. Worthington. It says, where development is to be supported, uh, developers will be required to ensure the provision of such new services or enhanced existing services as necessary from first occupation of the development for a period of up to 10 years or five years after last occupation. It is, uh, it, it's, it's rather more nuanced than you seem to think. And Mr. Ridge has explained the position. Thank you. the policy as written is a, is a bit wider and not as specific as as you suggest so it, it doesn't specify figures or, or anything like that it just says it will be provided I, 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 I agree completely it doesn't provide figures but they it, it is at odds with the figures that they've put elsewhere that aren't justified um, so either the figure in the allocation is justified, which it hasn't been because we haven't had the information properly, um, or the policy should be reworded to remove that requirement because the strategic sites can't provide for that. Do you mean the T1 policy yes. though, or the, or the allocation policy? Uh, well, we're dealing with T1, yeah, so have, if, yeah. the, if the allocations um, are providing for one million, two million pounds, um, and that doesn't, uh, the T1 policy isn't uh, in accordance with that because we haven't had the justification. T1 needs to be amended so that it's not at, at odds with the existing um, S14, S15 allocation policies. Okay. I understand. They need to work together. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Thank you, sir. They need to work together. That's why you've had the infrastructure delivery plan, he said again. And it says up to 10 years, and it's, it will be a matter for determination at the appropriate time. There's nothing that Ms. Worthington has said that requires an amendment to that policy. Okay. Okay. Sorry, the, the gentleman at the back, you've got your, your name plate up. If you could let me know who you are, because I'm, I'm sorry, my eyesight is kind of not Yeah, that's no problem. I feel like I should have moved further that way, but I didn't know these people were not going to turn up, so forgive me. Um, yeah, uh, Neil Jones representing British Sugar. Um, and I, I wanted to make a comment in relation to policy T5. Um, and I assume, I, I understand we are now on 7.2, so this is the right time to do that. Um, so th th this is a, a, a discrete point. Um, and, I, and I note what you said earlier, sir, about not getting um, bogged down into site specifics, but this was a point that's um, made in our statement on the transport matters, but it was also a point that I raised in the uh, previous hearings for the site specific policies. 
Um, and at that time, this particular point, uh, your, your colleague did refer to the fact that this could be dealt with in the transport matters session. So I hope that's acceptable. Um, as I say, it, it's a relatively discreet point. Um, there is a, an annotation on the policies map um, linked to the British Sugar site, uh, which refers to a potential uh, new bridge uh, or footbridge enhancement uh, across the Harrogate rail line and um, into the British Sugar site. The point that we've made previously and that's reiterated in our statement, sir, is that um, first and foremost, there's no requirement or uh, commitment um, within the approved permissions for the British Sugar site redevelopment to either uh, contribute directly or, or through off-site payments to any such improvement. Um, but also in relation to the transport policies and, and policy T5, there's no evidence of any uh, funding that I can find for that uh, improvement. Um, and therefore, whilst we, we don't have an, ob a, 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 an objection to it, uh, you know, the, the aspiration and its potential achievement in the future, it seems to us that it's not justified uh, suitably for inclusion or annotation on the proposals map or policies map. And therefore, um, our suggestion is that that annotation is removed. Thank you. Mr. Rich, Thank you. Yes, comment. please. Go ahead. Yes, I think, I think, I mean, this is quite a, a small area, but I mean, I think our view is there's no funding for a scheme, but it, it remains a reasonable aspiration. Um, it's a matter of detail, and we would pick it up at planning application stage. Um, I, I understand that uh, British Sugar have confirmed that, um, that the link could be delivered if it was funded. So as far as the council is concerned, it's, a, it's an aspiration as opposed to a requirement? Yes. As long as I'm clear about that. Yes. Does, does that help? Uh, well, to an extent, I think that backs up what my request really, which is that it's not necessary or justified to be included on the, the, the policies map. OK, well, I'll, I'll, I, can, I can leave that with the council. Yes, we'll, we'll, we'll note that, yes. But I, I think Mr. Merritt is um, Mr. Merritt, to say on. something. I think that comes back to our earlier point, that if the council have done the proper transport assessment, including assessing the network needs for the walking and cycling network, which it hasn't done, mm. uh, then this would obviously be a key, uh, one, one of the key routes, because the, at the moment, the site on the other side of the line is, is landlocked except at the north end and if you want to maximise walking and cycling then the provision of this bridge link uh, between these two sites would be a crucial part of any strategic cycling network um, and come, come back to that in the much wider sense. The council did have a strategic cycling network developed. Uh, it is actually shown on the current uh, local plan development control document, uh, the 2005 version, which, which is used for DC, or well, to a limited extent is still used for DC purposes. Um, and, but unfortunately, virtually all of that's been stripped out of the current plan. Uh, but with no evidence base, we're not having done the LC WIP, um, you know, it, we, we end up in a situation where the plan is completely inadequate uh, in looking at the strategic needs for walking and cycling. And that's also echoed in the uh, infrastructure delivery plan, where, as we identified at the previous hearing, there is a completely inadequate level of funding for walking and cycling measures uh, because they haven't done that work. And that just highlights the problems that have stemmed from the Council's failure to follow the DFT guidance. That, I'm afraid, is an exaggeration. So the, the, the fact is, is that we've identified areas where uh, provision should be provided. We've identified areas where there is an aspiration to provide. 
in some cases, um, viability won't allow it uh, to be uh, uh, imposed, and it has to be an aspiration subject to public funding. This ties in with the uh, future transport strategy as well and public funding arrangements. Where, where is the evidence of that? Sorry, I was just going to, I was going to add that um, cycling infrastructure is, is in a bit of a state of flux at the moment because the government's publication of um, local traffic note um, LTN 120, which uh, imposed much more rigorous design standards and, and has forced us to reconsider our, our network in terms of what we can provide, where it can be provided, uh, what standards we have to meet and how much that will cost. It's much more rigorous. I mean, as a council, we don't have, a, have an issue with that. Um, we are in the process of letting um, a commission to external consultants to develop a local cycling and walking infrastructure plan that will look at all of this um, in some detail and provide us with a, you know, a, a network and a prioritised list of schemes and all the other things we need to take forward cycling infrastructure in York. Um, obviously, once that is done, um, local transport for uh, when it's produced for spring 2024 will provide the bidding mechanism for fulfilling those schemes and and the um, sums which are in the infrastructure delivery plan at the moment for cycle schemes with the exception of one or two schemes linked to specific sites like ST15 uh, they reflect what we are currently spending in our current capital budgets over the next couple of years they're not over the life of the plan Yeah, well, we're in danger of going over, over ground we've already gone over, but, but um, Mr. May, did you have a point? Well, thank you, sir. I, I'm, I'm pleased to hear we're now on, uh, on question 7.2. It, it seems we've, we've jumped into it with, uh, with some specific points on specific policies. I, I wanted to come back to the general question of the relationship between Chapter 14 and policies T1 to T9 and the local plan as a whole. Um, I then have some comments on individual policies T1 to T9, and I wasn't sure, sir, whether you would want to take those one at a time to pick those up, um, or whether you want me to go through the full set of comments at this stage. I'm happy for you to go through the full set, set of comments. Um, I just want to make sure that you're aware of the fact that these policies have been modified. Absolutely. Recently. Brilliant. Um, okay. Absolutely. Just um, want to be clear. Well, first of all, the general point. Um, Mr. Ridge kindly suggested that the Civic Trust's approach was to say that the local transport plan had to come before the local plan. That, of course, is not our position. Um, we are very clear that uh, the local plan is paramount but that there needs to be a local transport plan to which it refers. And there needs to be a local transport plan to which it refers throughout the life of that local plan. And the difficulty... So I, 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 with respect to Mr. May, for, forgive me for interrupting, I do not understand then how he can say that the local plan should come first, because if there needs to be a local transport plan, then the local plan must come second, second as a matter of logic. And I wish he would be clear as to what he means, because I don't understand that at all. I think I'd welcome some clarity on, on that, Mr May, too. What, we, we had the discussion earlier about um, chicken and egg. Um, yes. The, 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 the two are clearly closely interrelated, and they have to build off one another. And I, don't, I didn't want to get into a discussion of what comes first. I was simply being told that I'd already made that decision. Um, uh, uh, they, they need to interact, and they need to interact throughout the lifetime of the local plan. Um, so um, t two or three points, and then our proposal. Um, First of all, we now have in the revised um, introduction to Chapter 4, references in paragraph uh, 14, references in paragraphs 14, 3a and 3b 
to this local transport strategy, which we hear, and I'm delighted to hear it, is to be consulted on um, during the autumn. Um, that, though, is not going to be a statutory document. It is going to be used to help develop the new local transport plan, which will be LTP4 in the standard parlance. Um, and I just wonder, in passing, whether it really is worth including in a long-term local plan references to an ephemeral document which will be overtaken by LTP4 um, as soon as that becomes available. Um, but um, the amended version of section 14 still refers to local transport plan 3, which dates back to 2011, and is now seriously out of date, given all the changes that have been in the last decade. Um, as the basis for policies T2, T4, and T5, um, paragraph 7110 of the council's response says that the council will be required to produce a new local transport plan by March 2024. We are, frankly, very disappointed the Council has not yet made further progress on this. We were invited in January 2021 to advise on the content of a local transport plan, which was going to be consulted on in December last year, and that's never happened. Um, the Council now seems to want to use the government's deadline of March 2024, which is the final date, as the date to which they work. And I'm afraid we look at all the comparator cities for York to realise how far behind the Council is. Um, all of them either have a fourth local transport plan in place, or they are consulting on one. And, and it, it seems unnecessary for the council to defer action until March 2024. Can I um, just make the point we're not deferring action, it just will take until March 2024. Uh, well, and, with, and can with, I just, with respect, Mr. Mr. May, will you just forgive me for a moment? We're back into 7.1. The paragraphs Mr. May has just referred to are under issue 7.1. I'm not entirely sure how this goes to soundness that we're arguing about the wording in supporting text. And I really wonder if we could focus on matters of soundness rather than Mr. May's own uh, opinion as to what we should be doing with the transport plan. Either there's a soundness point or there isn't. I, I think that's, that's likely correct. Is, is there a reason why what you're putting forward, is there something in that which goes to soundness of the plan? Ye yes, sir, because it's fundamental to the way in which policies T2, T4, and T5 are currently written because they refer back to LTP3, which is already out of date and will become much more so. And the Don't they have to, to refer to LTP? Uh, sorry. Don't they have to refer to LTP3, though, because LTP4 isn't with us? Uh, well, and and, and if, they have, if, if you want them to refer to LTP4 then wouldn't we have to wait until LTP4 was in place well, before the local plan could be he, adopted? He, here is our suggestion for a way forward. Um, and we do need to make sure that what is in the local plan and in section 14 is based effectively on an analysis of transport needs arising from the local plan and the best ways of of, of tackling them. Um, there seems to be a possibility that the council might be asked to produce a number of further modifications to the local plan and to consult on them. Were that to be the case, then we would suggest that those modifications incorporate the analysis in the local transport strategy and the beginnings of the analysis for the local transport plan so that we can be certain that the local plan as rewritten and reconsulted on um, is um, founded on a local transport plan that is likely to be 
effective. If, if that's not going to happen, then we would suggest that there needs to be a simple wording in the local plan that makes clear that decisions will be taken at the time they're needed on particular developments in relation to the local transport plan that's then in place. So that from 2023 or 2024, or whenever the local transport plan for appears, that is the basis for assessment of decisions in the local plan. And that would be a very simple wording, and it would allow the um, uh, all the points we've been raising about the lack of analysis to be tackled as the council becomes in a position to do so. And we could then be satisfied that when there is consultation on a next local transport plan, we know that decisions relating to the local plan will relate to that approved document. Mr. Elvin? Well, uh, t two points. I just fail to see how this goes to soundness. Secondly, it's, we could adjust 14.3a and 14.3b to say these will feed into a new local transport plan in due course. Thirdly, once the new local transport plan is adopted, it, <laughs> there will be a duty to have regard to it. And, and, and whatever wording you add adds nothing to the fact that uh, as, as you know, and Mr. May appears not to, the uh, planning, any planning application that comes in, of course, has got to be determined in the light of the relevant considerations and the relevant plans as they stand at the date of the decision. So it, it won't actually change anything because there'll be a duty to do that anyway. But if it, if it, if it helps, I mean, we can always add some additional text into 14.3a and 14.3b to say that the strategy will feed into the, into the local transport plan uh, which uh, will be prepared in due course. But I don't think it... In fact, it's in 14.3 already, as Mr. Linus points out. Uh, but I don't see what it adds to the soundness of the plan, because it's simply underlining something which will have to be done in any event. And it's, a long, it's, it's, it's an awfully long way to make a suggestion that is unnecessary. On the face of it, I, I can't see that that goes that goes to soundness. I mean, it, it might be, it might be a, a more um, easily understood paragraph for everyone reading the plan, but that I think the council would have to have regard to their new LTP in any event. I don't, no matter what, if, even if the local plan refers to LTP3, if that is then it re superseded by LTP4, well, the council is not going to be banned by the local plan to LTP3. They, of course, they're going to take into account LTP4. But um, I'm happy if, to leave that with I, you. I mean, we'll, we'll consider whether, for clarity purposes, we, we add in some additional wording to the proposed 14.3a, just to make it absolutely clear that this will feed into a new local transport plan, which will, of course, be taken into account as and when it's adopted. That, that, that could well assist. Mr. May? So, if you, if you think that that's an appropriate way forward, what concerns us is that at the moment, particularly in policies T2, T4, T5 and T8, we have references to approaches in transport policy terms which are likely to be, to a large extent, incompatible with LTP4. We, and we, and it's, it's, it's in regard to those potential incompatibilities that we're suggesting if we can get a wording in that makes abundantly clear that decisions will be based on the new local transport plan in preference to those existing T policies, uh, then I think we would be satisfied. Well, so uh, it, it seems to me that this is... Um, not feasible because a the current ltp is the current ltp uh, if it's out of date that will be taken into account at the relevant decision making time secondly you cannot judge the soundness of the plan by reference to policies in a plan which has yet to be produced i mean it's just a logical absurdity and the plan has to deal with the matters as they stand today 
and unless it's been suggested that we ought to abandon this plan, which I would resist with every fibre in my body, having been through now four phases, and the local authority would too, uh, then we have got to deal with matters as they stand today. But as you know, sir, it is an inevitability of a local plan process that um, new plans and new strategies are emerging, and we have to deal with matters uh, as they stand uh, at the current time. Otherwise, nothing would ever get done. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to leave this matter with you be, and, and between you if necessary, but I think, as, for, as far as I'm concerned, on, on a sort of analysis at, at a hearing, I'm not going away and thought about this, but it, it doesn't seem to me to go to the soundness of, the, of this plan that's in front of us, inspectors. If there's a reference to a, an LTP which is current, yes, it might be out of date. I don't, I don't think that really would, would overly concern me. It would be... It would be wonderful, wouldn't it, if LTP4 was, was, was closer, um, but it's not. So I have to deal with the situation as it is. Mr Ridge. I was just going to make um, two points of clarification. Firstly, about LTP3. It's a document from 2011, but it's actually valid until 2031. So it, you know, it covers the next nine years. Um, you know, some policies are maybe a little out of date now. A lot of the schemes in it have been delivered or are very much in delivery phase. But, um, you know, it is still our local transport plan. It is still valid. We still use it to determine planning applications, um, make funding bids, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, the second comment I was going to add was just about LTP4. Um, Mr. May is not correct when he says that other local authorities have developed LTP4. Um, other authorities have developed more up-to-date LTPs, but they are not LTP4, and that, this is for the simple reason that the guidance for LTP4 hasn't been released yet by the Department for Transport. We are expecting when that guidance comes out, it will place duties on local authorities to make quite substantial reductions in carbon. But without seeing that guidance, we don't know what that will point us to do. So it, so, so it is not possible for us to prepare um, a local transport for in advance of that guidance, and it is not possible for anyone else to have done it either. Um, so, so to say that there is a comparison which leaves York in the shade is, um, you know, it, 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 it's not a true comparison because because nobody has produced an LTP for. Uh, this is a minor point, sir, but to be clear, those local authorities and most comparator authorities have already done so that have produced local transport plans, have referred to them as local transport plan for inevitably because they supersede their local transport plan three. Uh, what the Department for Transport is now saying is that all local authorities or uh, transport planning authorities must either update that plan to reflect the guidance which we're still waiting for and must do it by March 24. Or if they've done nothing in the last decade, then they must make a start and get a, a full local transport plan for in place by that date. And that's what we've been trying to help the council to achieve. But the, the point remains, at some stage, the council is going to have to produce uh, a local transport plan that is markedly different from LTP3. And I think and would hope that that will become clear in the local transport strategy that we're being consulted on next month. Um, that being the case, and if your view is that it's inappropriate to make the change in form of words that I suggested, we would go back to our first and preferred option, which is that the council is required to consult on the wide range of modifications it is making and that you will look for for the local plan, and that in part of that process, they actually reflect what will be in the local transport strategy in those revisions. Um, 
and, and, and that way, um, we can try to make sure that the revision to the local plan, which is consulted on and which a decision will be taken on, uh, is as up-to-date as possible. But that's, of course, a question for you and your colleague to, to decide as to whether that's what you want the council to do. Um, would it be helpful for me just to say something about the individual policies, or do you want to take them one at a time or take a break? It's just I'm, I'm conscious of... I'm conscious of time, and we're getting, getting towards lunch break, so it might be worth um, if we resume after the lunch break with if we're going to start going to start going through detailed policies. I've got, I've got, we're coming up to one o'clock, so rather than embark on uh, something new, was there anything in what Mr. May said just now that you'd need to come back on? No, it, uh, the, the, the waiting for the transport strategy again. It's another, it's it's another. Um, recipe for procrastination which um, we reject um, the transport strategy is already referred to in the lowercase text at 143a and 143b um, mr. Ridge has already explained its relationship to the plan and the fact that it goes far wider than the plan and uh, that it is unnecessary for soundness purposes again to refer to a document which is only in preparation at the minute but is yet not in existence uh, unless, of course, we're simply to abandon the attempt to uh, uh, get this plan through. And, and as you know, uh, we uh, resist uh, that suggestion. Of course. Um, uh, no, other than that. Okay. Um, can I say, uh, Mr. Linus will be taking over after lunch. You know I've got personal reasons for leaving at lunchtime. So uh, apologies that I can't stay for the rest of the transport session. Not at all. Thank you. Um, I'm going to adjourn now. We're coming up to one o'clock. We'll, we'll resume at two. And then we'll, we'll start with Mr May's point about the individual policies at 2 o'clock. Until then, thank you.